Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy. In the last video we have seen how powerful JSP is and how easy it is to work with JSP. And then we have also seen that even if you have JSP which is so wonderful, we still use servlet. And then we have seen the theory video where we have discussed that whenever you work with JSP it gets converted into servlet and that's why servlets are better when you want to write logic. So in this video I want to show you the practical way of seeing how can you convert a JSP into servlet or even if your Tomcat does that for you, what code it generates. To understand that, I will be using a different IDE this time because last time we were using Eclipse. This time just to show that I will be using NetBeans because NetBeans have this cool tool to do that. Now if you don't have NetBeans in your machine, that's fine. You can simply search for NetBeans and you can go for the latest version which is 8.2 and download it and you can install it. It's very easy. You can just click on download and you can simply install it. There is one important thing when you say download, you have to make sure you are going for Java EE version because Java SE is basically for Core Java. Uh, if you want to go for the enterprise version, which is which supports uh, Java EE, then HTML, and then the servers, of course, you have to go for Java EE version. Now, once you download it, you have to install it. Now, once you have done with the installation, and if you open that means this is how it will look like. Just close the start page. We don't want the start page. What I want is I want to create a simple project. So what I will do is I will right click here. I will say new project. Now, while selecting a project, you have to make sure that you're going for Java web and say web application. Click on next. We'll give a simple name here. I would say to do JSP. Okay, you can give any name, doesn't matter. And then click on next. This is important. You have to select your server. Now, while installing, I have not checked Tomcat. I'm only installing Glassfish. So it's there. So I have a Glassfish in my machine. Uh, if you have Tomcat, that's fine. Uh, Tomcat will also work and then click on next. I don't want to select any of this thing here because we are not working on frameworks. Click on finish and you'll be getting your first web project in NetBeans. And it will give you HTML page, which is awesome. Now we don't need HTML, we want a JSP page. So let's do that. Let's create a simple JSP page. Very simple where you can add two numbers or whatever code you want to write. So what I will do is I will click on this web pages. I will say new. Hey, I want a JSP page and your NetBeans will say, okay, I will give you a JSP page, just name it. I would say this is home.jsp. You can give any name, doesn't matter, right? Uh, we don't have to say .jsp, it will be done by your NetBeans. That's what it was saying in the info, info here. And then you will click on finish. You got your page, you got home.jsp and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have any Java code. Now, what I will do is I will just increase the font size here. Okay, that's done. I have increased the font size going to settings. And now I'll be adding some Java code here. Now, what, what Java code we can simply say add two numbers and just, just print it there. So I'll be using this tags which we have done earlier. So I'll be using the scriptlet tags. And here I will type some code. I would say out.println. And here I would say seven plus five. So when, when you get the output, it would be hello world and 12, right? That will be, that will be the output. Let's see. And to run this code, it's very simple. Just right click here and say run file. It does take some time. And I guess it was trying to open a browser for me. So yeah, it's there. You can see that we got a page and it prints hello world and we got 12 as well. So that means the Java code is working. But how can you convert this into servlet? And of course it is done by Tomcat or Glassfish. You don't have to worry about it. But if you want to see the servlet file, how it will look like. So you just have to right click on your home.jsp and click on view servlet. Now when you click on view servlet, it will give you a backend servlet file. It's simple to understand. Think with the, go with the class itself. Now class name is home underscore JSP. This is derived from your, from your JSP file name, which is home.jsp. And it extends this class here, it implements this thing, doesn't matter. What is important for us is the code which you have written. And there's one more thing. If you if you remember servlet, in servlet we used to create out object. We used to say print writer out this one. So first you have to create the object and you can, then you can use it. But in JSP, it gives you implicit objects, which simply means you don't need to create those objects. It will give you by default and how it is how it is doing that so if you can see the servlet file here all the objects which is implicit objects have been created here example we have page context object we have session we have application we have config out page uh, then we have jsp x out i don't know when when we use it 
and we have this page context object once more i don't know we, we, i don't use it much but it gives you all those objects and it it is giving you all the prerequisite code now the code which we have written so if you can see our jc file if you see this file this is the code which you are writing right of course you're not writing it but it is done by your uh, netbeans but that's fine it is our code because we can change it and we have written our java code where it belongs to it belongs to out.write so in servlet as well this is what you do right you write all the html tag inside out.println or write it is doing the same thing and look at your code here this is your java code so as i mentioned in one of the video whatever you write inside that scriptlet tag or inside this bracket belongs to belongs to the service method or uh, maybe do get or do post depending upon what they have implementing so it is service method here so whatever you mention in that tag belongs to service and that's how you can see what is going on here quite simple right so it's hence proof what happens behind the scenes so when you write a jsp code it gets converted into servlet and whatever you mention in those brackets belongs to a service method now there's a question here and the question is normally when you talk about java classes you know there's also a java class right because it has a class it is it has certain methods and then variables now whatever i write inside this jsp in those tags belongs to the service method right but what if i want to write something outside maybe uh, i want to declare a variable which will be used by multiple methods so of course i'll be i will be making a instance variable and how do we do that how do i create a variable because of course you cannot change this file how do i change this if i want to create a variable here can we do it in jsp if i write if i create a variable if i say int i is equal to nine now this variable will be created inside your service method i want to create this variable outside the service method that's the first thing we want to do the second thing i want to do is about the packages let's say if I, if I want to import a package because here you can see we have import packages what if i want to import a jdbc package what if i want to import uh, some other package maybe a log file package how will i mention that in jsp because if you write import here the import statement will go inside your your service method which, which which we don't want i want to import the package which should be the first line of the code how I, how do i do that so those things two things we have to do and that will be done in the next video so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section and do click on the like button if you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching everyone